The Syracuse Board of Zoning Appeals meeting of April 18th is now in session. The first order of business is to approve the minutes from the March 28th meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any modifications or discussion? Yes, on the exception So all in favor of approving with the modification say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The minutes are officially adopted. The second order of business is to adopt the resolutions from the March 28th meeting. Is there a motion to adopt the resolutions? So moved. Second. second. Uh, any modifications or discussion? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of approving the resolutions, adopting the resolutions say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions? The resolutions are officially adopted. So here's how we will work today. Uh, the board will now conduct the public hearing hearing on today's agenda. Uh, first, the applicant or the applicant's representative will state the reasons for the requested variance and present any material or documentation which is to be considered regarding the proposal. Next, persons wishing to speak in favor of the proposal will be given the opportunity to address the board. Then persons who wish to speak in opposition to the proposal will be allowed to address the board. Finally, the applicant or a representative will be given the option to make any closing arguments or comments to the board. Uh, following the public hearing this afternoon, the board may make a decision on each application heard. The board may also decide to hold this decision until the next public hearing. If the hearing is closed, no additional information will be allowed into the record except for information that the board may request. That information will be available for public review at the Zoning Office and City Hall Commons. Staff will now introduce uh, the first application. <coughs> Anyone um, who comes up to the uh, podium, please state your name and address first. Is that microphone working? Could you tap it? No. Yeah. Is there a switch on the microphone? There is. I don't see it. You're live. I hear him. The microphone. No. No. I still hear him. No, I tried turning it up. Yeah. And it ah. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> Tangled. Good. There we go. All right, so good afternoon. My name is Michael Daum, D A U M, the law firm of Blitman and King. The address is 443 North Franklin Street, Suite 300, Syracuse 13204. I, my firm represents the current owner of the property, 4325 South Salina Street Realty Corporation, which is a single purpose, not for profit corporation that's sole purpose is to hold title on behalf of what is now the Operating Engineers of Upstate New York Local 158. It was originally when purchased the Syracuse local 545, which is merged into a beer union. So the union through the holding corporation has owned the property at 127 East Glen Avenue since I believe 1957. And it's in a residential area, but it, they did get a variance for use as its office building and union hall at the time. 
so the local had its office building in Union Hall at this location for the better part of near 60 years and then moved to a new location in 2015 when they closed on it. So as part of that, at that time, they were looking to sell the current building and have made efforts. They've and it's set forth in the written application in, in a little more detail, but um, they hired a realtor. They had it for sale for a period of time. They had a near sale, but the, the buyer could not find funding. And the property has sat vacant and unused since the move in 2015. So Road to Emmaus, and I should clarify too that the, the Realty Corporation is the co-applicant with Road to Emmaus in this. So the Realty Corporation's board was notified that Road to Emmaus, a, a charity, was willing to take a donation of the property which the union was receptive to for a few reasons. You know, one, to actually get viable use out of the office building that has been sitting there without any use. And two, because of the mission of Road to Emmaus to help the, the area, they thought it was a good way to do it. But then in digging through things, they saw that this current use variance for the office space would not cover the intended actions from Road to Emmaus. So basically, the Realty Corporation and the charity have a binding agreement right now that the property will be donated subject to this variance being approved. So to show the necessary hardship, you know, in the standard of proof, the property without this variance is incapable of any reasonable return on the investment as, you know, one, the local through the Realty Corp has made exhausted efforts to sell it and isn't confident it'll be able to sell it in its current form. Two, had it gone back to the residential area, Road to Emmaus, as you see, got some quotes on what the cost that would take. And to level the current office building would be about $35,000. And then to convert it to residential housing would be an additional about $171,000. So not really financially viable in its current state to, to match any use. So it couldn't be sold as an office building and it couldn't be converted to residential without any great efforts that would not be at all financially worthwhile as a, as a reasonable return on investment. There'd probably be no return on the investment. The second, the property being affected is unique with highly uncommon circumstances, basically just as it was laid out. It's in a mostly residential area, zoned as an office building, built as an office building. There's no way that without the great cost that it could be turned residential, so now you're stuck with an office building in various forms of disrepair that's been unable to be sold by the union despite efforts, again, with a realtor trying everything, and it's unable to be converted. So it's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place where it could really only be used as an office, but it can't be sold as an office in its current form with the current use variance. The third is that the variance of granted will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood Again, it's, it's been used as an office before, so its use as non-residential wouldn't alter the character of the neighborhood because it hasn't been used as residential for the better part of 60 years now. So that part of it's not a change. The part to use in some representatives, I also have you know, an attorney, the president, some directors from Emmaus, they can describe more specifically the changed use you know, and what was gonna be happening. But my understanding is they're already doing many of the same things in the same neighborhood and could be coming over and this shouldn't alter the characteristics above and beyond what the use as an office would be right now. And then finally, the hardship is not self-created. Again, here, the, the timeline's pretty clear is that in the 50s, they get this use variance, they build their office, they have their office there for 50 plus years. They then wanna move to another office they end up with an office building in a mostly residential area, disrepaired, can't sell it to anyone willing to take it as an office, can't convert it to residential without undergoing extreme financial hardship. So for those reasons, the current owner says there is an unnecessary hardship and would request that the use variance as applied for be granted. years in the middle of a residential neighborhood and they put this building up you I, no i have not, nothing that i could say that i would know no and can i ask uh, staff do is there a use variance in effect on this property now i know it's been vacant for several years has has any 
variance uh, expired, should we say? No, the variance stays with the land. So even though it was vacant, it they still is in effect. Use variance still, as long as they use it as was granted for granted the original use. Right? Yeah. Yes. So that variance is still. It's still in effect as long as the property is used but as described so in the in the variance. So we can revert it back to the current zoning because it went vacant. Well, the zoning is still residential A one. Correct. That doesn't change. No, but they're changing the, the, fact the, that the, the use, use variance is granted. The use variance was granted in seventy four went away when it went vacant. Correct. That's what he was. That's what I was asking. Yeah, that's what he's asking. I thought the reason we, it, they need a variance is because it's, it's a different use. Yes. This Not because they lost the variance because it's been vacant. Correct. It's because, I'm sorry. It's both. It's a different use. Yeah. As use. what was granted in 1974. All right, sorry. Uh, I, I, what I mean, was granted in 74 is still in effect even though it's been vacant for several years. Yes, the variance does not go away. Well, the, the variance, if, if the use wasn't maintained, it's two years. Um, that's, that's what I was expired. asking. Since this was 2015 that the union uh, hall ceased to be there, right? Oh, excuse me. I'm thinking of it would lose its nonconformity after two years. The variance should the variance runs with the land, so that should okay. still be in effect because that was granted. Even though it's been vacant. Yes. Okay. Yes, I believe so. Okay. Um, <coughs> go ahead. Uh, question. So just a clarification. Another office can go in this without any type of approval. Yes. But they're changing the. So right. I guess the my question would be, what's the, what's the difference between what is being proposed versus an office, just a standard office use? Yeah. I, as their attorney, I'd rather let him explain. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Sure. Uh, my name is Kurt, K-U-R-T, Stroman, S-T-R-O-M-A-N. Uh, the address is 605 West Genesee Street, Syracuse, New York, 13204. And uh, uh, first, I want to say that um, just on behalf of Road to Emmaus Ministry of Syracuse, we're obviously making this as a, we, we are the co-applicant, as Michael correctly noted, the unions own this building and, and, and been involved with this building for much longer than we have. However, we have been occupying an adjo uh, the adjacent property, property at 4335 uh, South Salina Street, which the northern boundary of the, of the property we're proposing to take uh, following the, the potential granting of this variance we occupy that property, currently have occupied that property for the past five years, and I've operated in the neighborhood for a little bit longer than that because we were previously uh, located out of the St. James, uh, uh, the parish uh, office there. So um, we have been in the neighborhood for quite some time. Um, this is not a new use in the neighborhood, and quite frankly, it's not even a new use in this immediate area as we're operating on an adjacent parcel currently. Um, as it relates to the use variance, I, I, I agree with the, you know, what uh, has been determined to be the case that the use variance it still is in existence. Currently, the union could go ahead and walk back in the door right now, open back up as a shop. It could be used as an office. Our use is not, um, is not uh, horribly more intensive than the use as a union hall in an office. With a union hall in an office, and again, I have to defer to Mike on this a little bit, but they had people that occupied the building on a day-to-day -day basis. They had staff members that were there on a day-to-day -day basis. They had union members coming in and out for things like classes. They had union uh, you know, meetings on a routine basis, I would assume, in, uh, at this location. Uh, Road to Emmaus uh, operates as a 501c3, and they perform uh, charitable works in the neighborhood, including uh, food distribution, uh, meal distribution, clothing distribution, uh, they offer some ministry services. They offer um, uh, prayers. There are uh, AA meetings that occur in the facility currently as it's proposed. Um, and uh, so the use, again, is not something that's uncommon for the neighborhood. It's not at all uncommon. It's not a, it's not a really new use. We're literally moving from our, from our front yard to a backyard location, essentially, is the best way to describe it. Um, Sheila Austin is here from Road to Emmaus today, and she can certainly address uh, the board with regard to the exact hours of operation, which I know we had provided some of that detail in the application, um, as well as a description of some of the services that are offered by the, by the ministry. So if you would like any further detail on that, Sheila can certainly answer those questions. Um, uh, by and large, though, the building, when it was operated as Union Hall, operated under normal uh, circumstances, probably from 8 to 5, as a typical office would, as they currently do in their new location. And then they also had night and evening courses for the union members, as well as 
union meetings and votes and things like that that would occur during you know non-routine business hours eight to five so uh, our use is really proposed to be a little bit more standardized i think eight to five we wouldn't have any nighttime use uh, sheila i kind of defer to you but um, it would normally be a daytime use as well as weekends um, saturdays uh, primarily is when we would also offer uh, ministry at the at the location during those hours so Yes, Ms. Austin, absolutely. Sheila, you work. Hi, my name is Sheila, S-H-E-I-L-A, Austin, A-U-S-T-I-N, and the address for uh, Amaze Ministry is 4335 South Salina Street, Syracuse, New York, 13205. seems like uh, you'd probably agree if I said that the neighborhood isn't going to change much because you're just moving a couple of feet away from your, pre your present facility. So why do you need to move? What's restricting in, in your current facility? Well, we currently have kind of um, outgrown where we are current, uh, currently at 4335. Uh, we are uh, serving more meals. So we have more people that are coming through for our daily uh, breakfast, usually breakfast and lunch meals. Our supplies that we are distributing to those in need are increasing. So a, a lot of it's a storage, but it's also identifying that there are more needs that we can serve the people in our community that would require uh, a larger facility that uh, at the 127 East Glen would give us twice as much square footage. Than what we have now. Does that mean there will be twice as many people in each building? N no, I don't see it that way. It, it gives us certainly more room in the kitchen to move around to prepare our meals and, and to serve them, but a larger storage area. I see that uh, we will be utilizing the same number of volunteers that we do and have for two years now, providing the same sort of services. Kurt? Yes, Kurt. Kurt yes, sorry. Well, um, you were mentioning the similarities and differences. Now, does the union hall have uh, kitchen and sh and showers? Because I I notice is that is that going to change? Are you adding those to? Uh, yes, we would have to um, reconfigure the whole in inside of the facility so that it would have a commercial kitchen, seating area, the shower facility, laundry facilities, and, and storage for our uh, the people we serve. Is that, is that funded? Uh, yes, we are working on getting the funding for that. Um, staff, uh, what about the driveway width? Does that, uh, what width are they allowed there? The current arrangement was um, approved under the... The 74? The 1999 variance. Yeah establish additional parking um, in order to permit parking area behind the 127 so that um, site plan so they're allowed something more than 12 feet yes uh, what about uh, screening it's uh, surrounded by residential properties would the screening requirements apply they should I don't see that there's screening when I was there, it was a chain link fence all around the parking lot. Yeah, under the 1999, I'm sorry, this is Kurt Stroman again. Uh, in 1974, when they originally granted the variance, uh, the union also owned and operated uh, a couple buildings along Salina Street as well, South Salina Street, uh, that were, again, they're the back of the prop. this property aligns with those. Uh, at one point in time, they sold the properties that fronted on Salina Street, and then they just kind of uh, moved their operation to a smaller facility, which is the one on East Glen. At that time in 1999, they sought a variance so they could add parking to the site. Prior to that, it did not have parking at a driveway that passed through to the Salina Street properties, a much larger parking operation at the, at the rear of the facility. They closed off that, and the only requirement in the 1999 variance was that, was that there had to be a, and it was actually specifically stated in the 1999 variance, that a chain link fence had to be 
constructed upon the northerly boundary to prevent vehicular traffic to and from the Salina Street uh, parking lots and that all parking for this building would remain on that site. Um, the, the current configuration that we have for parking on the site is no more intense than what was provided for under the 1999 variance and uh, based upon a code review by the architect that did the design is sufficient for the purposes uh, that we've laid out, that Sheila's laid out to him for the number of volunteers and the number of visitors at the facility. Uh, to Sheila's point, we will have to go through and seek approval. We'll have to go to the codes department and get approval for the changes and modifications that we're seeking to make to the building. Um, and it would involve simply adding a kitchen and showers and then kind of re-demising the space a little bit. Uh, right now, because it's been vacant for a while, the union moved out. When they did so, there are, there are some, some things that, are, that have fallen into some states of disrepair, although they did, have done a very good job maintaining the building, even though it's been vacant for the last several years. But facade improvements will be made, lighting improvements will be made, uh, proposal to add a few more windows to the building, uh, items of that nature. But related, as it relates to parking, we're not proposing to change a curb cut. We're not proposing to change uh, the intensity of the usage of the parking on site in any way. It's all going to be done in conformance with the 1999 amendment to the variance. Yeah, how many cars are in the facility? I think, and Sheila, I'm going to defer to you, but I believe the parking uh, allotment that was made by the engineer, again, following his, his review and based on the usage of the building. Um, find the parking numbers here just give me one second I apologize hang on one second I apologize I have to find the other parking calculation but I believe it was no more than eight parking spaces and any given day at any at any given time would any of those be uh, a, uh, accessible by wheelchair I believe there's one handicap uh, spot uh, again pursuant to code there has to be at least one and there's one there so is there street parking around there too? Uh, on, there's odd even standard city parking on East Glen Street I think the vast majority of the people that are served by the by the ministry are probably walking to the facility or taking public transportation um, I think that's the, the vast majority of, of people that are coming and receiving services there um, I think primarily the drivers are typically the volunteers and you know Sheila and the other you know people that come in and, and operate on a daily basis um, back to my question about sh uh, shielding um, screening so on page 15 of your agenda um, there is a condition um, on the 1999 variance um, condition number two speaks regarding the screening passage of motor vehicles between the properties at 127 and 131 East Glen and properties to the north shall be prevented by installation of screening barrier either a fence or evergreen hedge at least three and one half feet high along the northern line of the subject properties and a gate opening solely for pedestrian passage between the properties shall be permitted and that's that is there to this day it still remains I think you saw it maybe when you visited the site on the northern boundary of the property there's a four foot tall chain link fence with a, a single person pedestrian gate at the rear of the property and, and my question though is is that sufficient to serve as screening for the residential properties next door the uh, there are not slats in the fence and, I, and again I, I think in when they granted that variance in 1999 I think they uh, complied with the variance simply by putting up a chain link fence if, as that was all that was required at that time no no I'm I'm just looking for other code issues here yeah. uh, other questions it really should be oh, yeah. no. thank you thank you uh, I'm go in, a, in a second I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say um, Anybody who wants to speak in favor, uh, uh, you have the right to. Let me, uh, by a, a show of hands, how many people want to talk? Okay, that's fine. Anybody in favor want to speak? Please. Sometimes I get, you know, everybody wants to speak, and I give a little speech on keeping it short, but that's okay. Good afternoon. My name's Bryn Lovejoy Grinnell. I'm third district common counselor. That's my seat over there. Um, but here I'm, t I'm here. Today I'm here to speak in support of the application of Emmaus Ministries. Um, I visited the facility and, and Sheila and others from 
the organization can speak more to the purpose and the, um, the great things that are happening there. But the, the three things from a neighborhood perspective or from a district perspective that I wanted to share with, with, the, with you um, are first that, that um, when I knew this meeting would be happening today, I sent a letter to neighbors in the immediate area um, because I wanted to hear from them. I, I was in support of the, the work that Emmaus was doing, but I wanted to make sure that my um, Speaking in favor was, was reflected in the community as well, and I, I've received only positive feedback from, from the neighbors that I've reached out to about the project. Um, second, I don't know if you're that familiar with the location, but there's a, it's zoned residential, but there's a very commercial or mixed use character of that, of that area. From the front of, uh, of this location on Glen Street, there's a barber shop that's kind of across the street or kitty corner across the street, Purcell Paints, and, there's a, ho and a hotel is visible right from the front of the building. Um, this is not a strictly residential kind of, pro kind of property or neighborhood, um, and, and so this use would very much be in compliance with the feeling of that, of that area. And third, I think one thing that hasn't maybe been said um, is that the way this building looks right now is is an eyesore, and it's and it does not reflect well on not the not the Emmaus building, the building on Glen Street, um, on Glen Ave. Um, it's it doesn't look great. It's very old fashioned. It's um, it's obviously not in in good in good repair from the outside, and doesn't it doesn't add anything to the neighborhood. And I think from the designs that the the Emmaus folks have have put forth, you'll see that there's going to be a, a huge improvement to the character of that block with their their bringing um, bringing in all the all the design and all the um, the work they're doing to the project in addition to having people in and out and and keeping that facility in use and and being able to help even more people so just wanted to point out those three things I'm very much in support of the project and I and I hope uh, I would urge the council to uh, to uh, be in support of it as well thank you thank you Anybody else want to speak? good afternoon my name is Rhonda VC V, like Victor, E-S-E-Y. And I am in support of... Your address, please. I'm sorry. 117 Seneca Drive. I live in the neighborhood, um, maybe four or five blocks away from where Emmaus is located now. Um, East Glen is right... Seneca Drive is right off of East Glen. I've been in the neighborhood for over 40 years now. We always wondered what was that building and why has it been empty for so long? And like um, the counselor just said, it's an eyesore now, along with the rest of our city having eyesores in throughout neighborhoods. Um, it's not actually residential. There are two homes um, on either side, but they're, they're far away. They're not as close as what residential housing is like. So this building has been sitting there vacant for a long time. I don't know when they moved in. I remember when they built the building, but it's always looked like a Jehovah Witness hall. So, and it's old now. And what better use to have uh, renovated in that space uh, than Emmaus? The, the, um, the talk in the community for what Emmaus has done out of all the good things we could talk about, it's 100%. It's a tremendous bonus. So coming around the corner, not that far, and gaining space for crowded uh, breakfasts on Tuesday and Thursday mornings, um, there's never been any trouble, would be tremendous. And so that's what I'm here to attest to today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kathy, C-A-T-H-Y, Dwyer, D-W-Y-E-R, 211 East Glen Avenue, Syracuse, New York, 13205. I live three houses up from the building that's promote, proposed for the Emmaus. Um, I also have volunteered at the Emmaus. Um, I strongly support this variance. I also have talked to neighbors and who have no objection to it. The building as it is now, as everybody said, is really unattractive. People cut through and there's broken glass, there's litter. 
On one side is the creek and there's a fence and that's all overgrown. On the other side is an empty lot and then there's a building next to the empty lot. That building is more of an eyesore than what the, MA, or what the building, um, the engineer's building is now. Um, I do have some concerns. The sidewalks on East Glen are in horrible shape. They really, I mean, I cannot walk down them without tripping over them. I assume that Emmaus is gonna do something about the landscape. What it is now is just stone and one bush, and there's usually litter there. Crossing Salina Street, and a lot of the um, people who come to Emmaus cross Salina Street. Something needs to be addressed about um, either a stop sign at those corners or a light or at least some sort of a crossing with a sign saying stop for for people crossing um, again I've been in the neighborhood I don't even want to say how many years um, there are a lot of thing negative things in the neighborhood this is not going to be a negative um, factor for our neighborhood it will be an occupied building that will be well maintained. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else wish to speak? <laughs> Kathleen Stribley, 316 Monticello Drive North. I've got written testimony, um, which I can give you. Uh, I'm not opposed to this, but I have some concerns. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna run through those. Our order is to get those in favor and then those against. So I'm in favor. You're in favor. Okay. I'm in favor, I have concerns. Okay. <laughs> I, well, have, the, I have issues that, so. The proponent, proponents will have a chance to address after you speak, so go ahead. Yes. Um, I, I've also lived in this neighborhood since uh, around the mid 80s um, and I'm very familiar with the property in, in question. I testified at the 1999 use variance for the um, operating engineers proposal at that time uh, and we were actually we had some relationships with them from historical for historical reasons. Um, the Emmaus Ministry on South Salina has, has been a welcome addition to the neighborhood. It's been a good use for that particular property they're in on Salina Street. Um, I understand the owner raised their rent as one reason they're being um, encouraged to move. Um, and it's unfortunate because I think where they are, they're in very good situation. But. Um, uh, the, the idea that this building will be donated is positive for them, and I can understand why they want to move there. Um, this end of Glen Avenue doesn't look bad for no reason. It's been abused for a long time, and this building was one of the reasons um, back before I moved into the neighborhood that it was allowed to be built there. Um, the com When you start having commercial incursions into neighborhoods, then the houses around get um, destroyed and then other things happen and become vacant. And we, we have, so now we have vacant lots. We have next to it, we have an old stream bed that was put underground. We have a road easement um, all in that particular area. Um, and we, and we have properties that are vacant that are now attached to commercial properties on Salina Street. So we have other things going on. Um, there's been a lot of deterioration even since the 1990s. Um, it's been going downhill. We have a lot of vacant houses. We have the land bank in there um, and other things. Um, so it's it's sort of well established that all these things create this deterioration which has been going on there. Um, Kathy's one of the people that's been living there for a long time. She takes care of her house. She has great flowers in her yard. I've known her forever. But I watch all this stuff going on around, around that area. So I'm very concerned. Um, so the, I, 
support this humanitarian mission. I, I support this building being occupied. I think it would be positive. Um, I want to bring up some concerns that we have. Um, the East Glen Avenue sewer, which is eight to 10 inches, built in 1928, um, carries the entire Loretto Geriatric Center load. Um, now there's some caveats that I brought in this thing. It carries the 520 Cunningham building, the 200, I think it's 200 from Fahey. It carries the offices, the treatment centers, the large institutional kitchens. Um, we went through lots of hearings in the late 1989 um, 90 area where we tried to make the city aware of the impacts on our neighborhood. After it was built, it was approved, we had lawsuits in relation to that, um, but it was approved. The courts, we were too late to pose it through the courts. After Faye was built, we had sewage overflows on Glen Avenue with bed pads, with gloves, with medical device, everything from Loretto. Um, then they, they actually, after that, the city began to clean it out on a, on a weekly basis or even bi-weekly basis. Um, then there were more overflows and then Loretto actually proposed another building. Excuse me, Mr. Strickland, I'm gonna ask you to be brief on this because this has nothing to do with what we're deliberating on. Today. Well, they're connected, the sewage. Yes, but we, uh, we're only dealing with, with, with the change in, in use. Okay. Um, you know, we're glad to hear about it, but, but we're not going to be doing anything about that at, at all. There are other. Okay, well, the reason I'm bringing it up is that they have kitchens, they have, um, they're going to increase the sewage load. I'm, now I looked into this and I looked at the maps. I'm just bringing this up as a background. The overflows in the neighborhood have caused some of the deterioration and some of the possible issues with housing there. Um, it appears that a separate sewer was built around this building. I don't know for sure, but that's what my records show. Um, recently, Loretto proposed additional sewage coming down the street, and Vince Esposito for the city denied that proposal. All right, so this building, if it adds into that sewer line, which I don't really know where the sewage goes, if it goes into the new stub line that was built in 1974 or not, that's an issue. And and because of the way the kitchen grease issues, um, waste, and all those things, and I'm not sure about the regulations, Loretta was required to put in a grinder degreaser system um, in their, on their property so they would not overload the system. So that, I'm concerned about that part of it, if they, have, um, if they have a waste issue and they add to this problem. If they do back up that line, it backs up the whole street and all the rest of sanitary sewage. That's the only thing I'm bringing it up for. If they're not connected, there's no problem. Um, uh, as people have mentioned, the building appearance and the conformance to the residential landscape is not good. And it, I hope that Emmaus Ministries would make it look better. Um, we brought up the landscape to the operating engineers back in 1999, and their response was to take out all the landscaping, put in gravel and two round areas to make it look, uh, it looks terrible, it looks horrible. Um, and they you're took out all the vegetation. About, you're talking about the front of the building now? Yes, yes. So was we, there park we, there originally? There was more of a grass, appearance and they took it out and put the gravel in. That was, that was done in the late 1990s or early 2000s. And they did that to reduce their maintenance, so we would hope that they would make it look more like the residential street and, um, and improve that appearance. Um, I, just like Kathy, I want to bring up the sidewalk repairs. That, that would be very good if they could improve the sidewalks because, as I understand, most of their clients are pedestrians. Um, there is some concern, slight concern, about the traffic issues. Um, if there were frequent truck or van issues or potential conge congestion of East Glen Avenue near Salina Street, 
Um, this is a main neighborhood entry. It's also a main bus route uh, for Central. Goes back and forth through there. So hopefully deliveries will be adequately handled behind the building and parking will be adequate um, if the ministry expands its client population. So I'm, while I'm bringing these up, I support it. I'm just saying um, it's a vulnerable area. It's been going downhill. It's not without reason that it's been going downhill. Uh, it's because of previous decisions that were made related to this area. Um, there's more that I could bring up, but um, some of these are, are serious. The sewage one is one I'd like to hear an answer to. Um, and even if they're connected to the 15-inch line, I just hope that we don't have a, any kind of blockage on that street. It will be very serious. I'd suggest so. you give a copy of that to the applicants because they'll be coming back later. Maybe they can address some of your concerns. Okay. But I am supportive. I just, I would, I would like to see it occupied. I would like to see it active. I, um, all these people live in our neighborhood. They walk in, um, or, or they're brought in, or whatever. The mission is very good. We are just, we have a lot of things going on around us that um, impact that area. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to speak? I have the reports. I have the reports from the, uh, the sewage reports I would give that from 1991. My name is Kirk Butler. Kirk, K I R K Butler, B U T L E R. Your address, please. Oh, 42 24. Onondaga Boulevard, which is a senior's building. I volunteer down there. I can go way back with this ministry, a good ways back. And what I see in that neighborhood down there is a lot of people that learn to respect one another. They didn't hardly talk to anybody because they didn't have a place where they could go and talk. But they come there, they presentable, and all of us that volunteer there, we love it, and they also love us. So all I can say is to help a community to grow is places like this, EMAS Ministry, Road to EMAS Ministry, because it helps a lot of people of all generations come together down there, learn to love one another and respect one another. That's what I see down there, and we also help anybody who's in need. And they just don't come there to sit around and just eat all day. They come there so they can talk to one another that's living in their neighborhood that they haven't talked to in years, probably. And that makes me feel good for what I do out of EMAS ministry. The place is really fantastic. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to speak in favor of the application? Anybody wish to speak against the application? Hearing none, we will. Should I give them a chance? To, I think so. Do you, do you want to say something? You're, sure. you're in time. Uh, just a brief closing. Obviously, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your review of the application. Um, I think at the end of the day, the, the situation can be boiled down to this. There's an existing use variance that was granted on a building, and the building has been largely, you know, uh, it's kind of been let go. Um, and to the point that a lot of the speakers today have made, um, it's maybe not reflective of, of some of the other good things that are happening in, in the community. Um, Emmaus occupied a building immediately adjacent to this a few years ago pursuant to a lease. That lease is about to expire. Um, we are looking for a little bit larger facility. We've realized now after operating in the current facility that we need some more storage area. We need some other things that we need to do on site. Um, but we believe that we're doing great things in the community and great things in this neighborhood specifically. Um, this building came to our attention and we were in discussions with the union about it for a little bit of time. And I think we're really solving a couple issues here in the neighborhood with, uh, with one application, really, and with, with one proposed donation. Um, obviously, uh, we made significant improvements to the building we currently occupy at 4335 South Solana Street, despite the fact that we're uh, in there in accordance to, with a lease. Um, we made significant capital improvements to the building, to the structure, which is uh, in much better condition than it was prior to our occupancy. We intend to do the same thing here, as you can see in our application. 
um, and we really do hope to continue this work in the neighborhood at this location. Um, and, and your approval of this will facilitate the donation from the union to Emmaus and allow us to continue to do that. Otherwise, we are at the end of a lease term, and we have to obviously at that point evaluate our options, which may include us being displaced from the neighborhood, which we certainly don't want. Um, we would like to continue to operate there. We believe this building is the right location for us. It will suit our needs, and we'll be able to hopefully continue to serve the neighborhood. So thank you again for your time. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Okay, um, we'll close the case, and that's our only case for today. So, and there's no new business, right? So, uh, we'll talk about this case. Is there a motion on women with cancer? B 1915 use variance, use permitted at 127 East Glen Avenue. Is there a motion? No, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, uh, your rationale? Realize a reasonable return, provided the lab is in substantial demonstrated a competent financial evidence. I think it was uh, it was presented that um, to revert, well, let me not use that word, to, 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 to go to a residential property here would be would, would not be cost effective. They tried to sell it, as they indicated, by listing it, um, had no money in the office building um, to take it down bear the cost of demolition and then the reconstruction of a building, um, you know, you'd be in the probably a little over $200,000 range. One likely that you'd be able to sell a property over there for that amount of money. So um, I think they met the, the, uh, the reasonable return test. Um, the alleged hardship relating to the property in question is unique and does not apply to a substantial portion of the district or neighborhood. Um, I do believe it's unique this particular property that was granted a variance to construct, uh, use variance to construct an office building. So that's unique to this neighborhood and it no longer um, is being used in a, as an office. Um, the requested use variance, if granted, will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. I don't believe it will. We heard from a couple of speakers today that um, the, the neighborhood is not necessarily just a residential neighborhood. It's a mixed use neighborhood and you can see that either by driving down there and looking around or even by looking at the aerial shots that was in our package. There, there are commercial uses directly across the street from there. Um, so uh, I don't think it will alter, granting this variance, I don't think, I uh, believe will alter the character of the neighborhood. And the alleged hardship has not been felt or created. I don't believe it has. Mike, anything else? And, and, oh, and I'm sorry. And Seeker. Mike, anything else? I agree with the uh, uh, Yeah, I, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm glad it lines up with the standards. With, I would hate, you know, the expression, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they're, you know, uh, very generous offers being made uh, as well. And it, it would be a shame if they couldn't take advantage of it. Uh, anybody else have anything to say? Um, I was pleased to see that the, the common counselor pulled the neighborhood to kind of get the feel of, of how the neighborhood felt about this property. Um, you know, we, we didn't hear from people today who were against the project. We heard from a couple of people who had some concerns, um, but uh, still were in favor of the project as a whole. So I, I think that that um, is, is good as well, considering this is their neighborhood and um, everyone is concerned that something might affect the essential character of their neighborhood. So I, I think that that was, was definitely a plus for this project. And I, and I would suggest uh, the concerns stated were legitimate concerns. They just don't have to do with, with our variance. So I, I, I suggest that you find the right people to talk to at City Hall to uh, uh, check up on that and, and see also what the applicant is doing. Well, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Just to, to piggyback on that, uh, Stu, uh, one of the issues with the plumbing and the sewage and all of that. Uh, we do receive a report uh, from the various departments in the city as to how they see this project. They, they all review it 
and uh, give their comments and statements and things of that nature. And um, this project, like any other, is going to have to conform to whatever the city uh, deems necessary for sewage. So if, the, if there's an issue, it will be resolved at that point. This is just, our, our hearing today is just about installing this use in the neighborhood. Okay, call the question. All those in favor of approving the variance say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, no. You're set. Um, authorizations for well, Authorizations for next time. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nancy, motion to adjourn. So moved.